All right, got another review here for you. This time I'm going to be reviewing Moosehead's Pale Ale. Um, as you can see, red label, brown bottle. As many people who have drank, drank Moosehead before know, uh, their lager usually comes in green bottles. Crack Canoe comes in green bottles. Um, <coughs> their dry um, typically comes in a brown bottle, but that's besides the point. You hardly ever see the big Moosehead logo on a brown bottle. I don't know why people really are obsessed over that, because it's not it's never been a big deal. I'm surprised this beer is actually not very, uh, not more widely available than it is. Uh, I live in St. John, New Brunswick, um, and this beer is so common. I, I mean, it's available in massive quantities just about everywhere you go. Bars, liquor stores carry, liquor stores carry flats of it, you know. Uh, yeah, but uh, I, I, I've been to other provinces and I just didn't realize like it's it's not really available everywhere, uh, and that's a shame because it's really good uh, compared to some of their other works, which aren't that bad. But I've been drinking craft brew for the last couple of years, and um, anyway, I just figured I'd like to give this one a shot. Uh, it is like a cheap macro locker. Mm, let's crack her open here. Very easy to open cap. Uh, obviously tailored to, uh, you know, the the, the, the the laid back, don't care where their beer comes from as long as it's got that label on it, beer. Let's take a look. A little bit of a head there. Maybe I gave it a little too much. Coming up is one two fingers right there but uh, ordinarily it comes up with one um, bubbles are big it looks like soap foam to be honest sticking around for a bit being also that I, I, I live in St. John this is also fresh it's brewed here I mean I get this right out of the store it's only been sitting on the floor for a couple weeks um, it's actually fairly popular around to these parts. It's actually kind of dying into like a like a poofy, uh, pillowy foam in there. That's actually really nice looking, um, and I'm actually impressed for uh, a beer from uh, a macro brewery. Uh, looks that good. Maybe they changed their style recently. It's not really high rated on uh, Beer Advocate or anything. It's just your your run of the mill swill, to be honest. Uh, however, it looks really pretty. A nice, like a golden, uh, golden amber color, kind of an almost a gold, like a, like a, a deep gold. Uh, looks like it's got some bubbles coming up through it. It's pretty clear. Let's see if it sniff. <clears throat> now you do get that metallic smell common with macro lagers, macro beers. Sorry, this is a nail. Sorry. Well, one thing you do smell though is it's got a nice like a multi toffee smell. First time I cracked one of these open after not having it for several years uh, and, and drinking craft brew for all that time, I I was actually impressed. I mean, I didn't expect it to smell that good. It's almost like a toffee coin kind of smell. Let's give it a taste. Wow. Really hits you in the mouth with a... It starts off as a metallic coin. Uh, and I imagine that's the European hops they brew this stuff, brewing this stuff, uh, kicking in. But it's got a nice... Uh, toffee taste to the to the center of the mouth and the back of the mouth I and mean, appa very apparent in the aftertaste mild sweetness bitterness is there but it's very very mild and there's coin uh, uh, hints of corn to the aftertaste it's it's apparent in the uh, the tongue It's a little heavier than some lighter lagers. I mean, it is an ale. It's, it's actually got some uh, 
I'm giving it too much credit by saying it's got meat on its bones, but it, it really doesn't. It uh, It's not like a light beer or anything. It's nice and crisp and refreshing. It's almost water, but it, not quite. And you get that little bit of that corn, coin, coin flavored bitterness. And um, even though it is a macro lager, it doesn't really come across as being overly off putting. Um, really digging that, that toffee note to it. I imagine this would make a fantastic uh, 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 session beer. And it's cheap. Uh, this this beer is generally like twenty two dollars for twelve of them um, around here. So it's and that's Canadian dollars. I suppose it doesn't mean anything anymore. Um, it is pretty decent. Uh, now don't don't get me wrong. I love my craft brew and everything, and this is still a macro lager. But you got to give it the benefit of the doubt that it's it's pretty decent. And if you're looking for a beer, you want to uh, really chug a lot of these ones at once, or if you want to go take it to a party. Or something as a go-to beer that you want to like keep in your fridge and crack open on a hot day. It's just this could almost pass as a craft brew. And then actually, in some provinces, I've been told like Quebec, this is actually considered a craft brew. Uh, there might be some people watching this and might be able to tell me for sure. But uh, a friend of mine who lives out in Montreal told me that uh, this is considered craft brew. Moosehead. Um, it, it's it's nice. I like it. not a personal favorite and if you're going to match this up with other true pale ale styles it's the bitterness is maybe a little too mild so it's not completely fitting of the style but it's inoffensive it's it's pretty it's pretty good and definitely easily drinkable and um, I'm gonna drink the rest of this uh, I'm giving it a 3 out of 5 uh, if you see it give it a shot it's not going to cost you a whole lot. Try it.